Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. I'm continuing our character study today from the Word of God so that we might gain insight and direction from some of these great men who believed God in the face of trials, in the face of difficulties, and also to look at their respective call and their commissions. You know, we are put here, beloved, on this earth to do something for God. And character matters to God. It's not what we do. But it's who we are, and that's what matters to God. That is why he sent Jesus, to show us his character through Christ. When we understand the character of God, we, we like the patriarchs of old, can do the same wonderful exploits, and even more because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life, to which God has called us. Today, I want to look at the life and the character of Abraham. He is one of my most favorite. He is known as the spiritual pilgrim. And I love the fact that when I think of Abraham, I think about how he just really obeyed God and going out, not knowing where he was going. And our life here, beloved, is a pilgrimage. Don't get too comfortable because this is not where we are settling forever. The study of the life of Abraham is important because he was chosen of God to become the father of a new spiritual people. God chose him and planted seeds of faith in his heart, which were to spring wonderful results for all future believers. Abraham was a great spiritual leader, and he proved this by going out, the scripture says, not knowing where he was going. He trusted God. It was a great act of faith. Many times God calls us to just take a great step of faith and trust him with the rest. Abraham, while he was living with his father, received a message from the Lord calling him to separate himself from his old associations and to go to a new country. God promised him divine favor, great posterity, and that he would become a blessing to all the families of the earth. And you know, because Abraham obeyed the call from God, he did become the leader of what Hebrews calls an innumerable company of believers who have sought a city and whose architect and builder is God. Praise God for men like Abraham. Abraham's journey started with his father in the land of Ur of the Chaldeans. His father was Terah, and scripture tells us that Terah, Abram's father, took Abram, his grandson grandson Lot, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur and settled in Haran, and it was in Haran that Abram's father Terah died. Now, most of the important events in Abraham's life centered around are are connected to all of his journeys. And I want to remind you that we need to love the journey. Love the journey of the Christian faith. We, We are on our way. We are going somewhere. But God has a plan for us in our journey. In each and every land or town that Abraham entered, something happened to further and strengthen his faith in God or to test his faith. It was after his father died in Haran that Abraham received the call from God. Genesis 12 verses 1 through 6 tells us, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I want to inject here, uh, brother and sister of Christ, that you are a blessing. And once God says that you are a blessing, no one can take that away from you, except you can choose not to receive the blessing or to be a blessing. God wants you to know that you are a blessing. So the scripture tells us that Abram left as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. 
Now, I'm not so sure that Lot should have gone with him, but he did. But Abraham obeyed God and left his land and his family except for Lot. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. You know, it is amazing how many journeys are recorded in Scripture. From Haran, he went to Shechem, where the Lord appeared to Abram and promised him that to his offspring he would give that land. And Shechem is where Abraham built his first altar. From Shechem, he went on to Bethel, where Scripture records he pitched his tent and built another altar to the Lord and also called on the name of the Lord in that place. Then from Bethel, he goes to Egypt, where he denies that Sarah is his wife. So you see, we're not perfect as as our, um, our giants in the past. The, the, I love the Bible because it tells the truth. It tells not only the faith of these great men and women, but it also points out their faults. But thank God, he doesn't look at your fault, and he doesn't look at my faults. He looks at our faith. And pretty soon, you keep going, and your faith will overtake your faith faults. It says that Abraham, uh, he, he returns to Bethel and offers another prayer to God, and then he goes to Hebron and builds another altar. In Genesis 25, we find that Abraham ends up in a Hebron where he dies and is buried. He had many other journeys in between. He was faithful to pray and to build altars to the God that he learned to trust. I heard a godly man say once in a Bible study that the great men of the Bible, they pitched their tents and they built their altars. Today, we build our tents and have more, you know, we're putting more of ourself into our homes and our businesses. And we just kind of build our homes and build our businesses. And then we just kind of pitch our altar. Maybe that is why we don't see more miracles. For to see the great miracles of God, there is always a price to pay and there are always sacrifices to be made. The outstanding events and experiences of Abraham's life included the divine call. It included the divine covenant, the divine delay in the fulfillment of the promise of a son. Over 20 years passed before Isaac was born. It is the same with us today. God gives us a divine call. He gives us a divine covenant. And there, there will be divine delays. But praise God, God is faithful to his promise. We not only see Abraham's great faith, but we also see his great mistake when he heeded Sarah's plan to aid the Almighty. And he went into her handmaiden, Hagar. You see, sometimes delays can cause us to miss the mark. God, don't ever shun God's delays. They are not his denials. They're just delays. He's got something better, and it's to test our faith. Abraham showed us his great intercession for the cities of the plain and his nephew Lot. But the greatest test of Abraham came when God asked him to sacrifice his only son, the promised son. And we see because of his remarkable faith and obedience, his greatest need was supplied when the ram came from the thicket. Abraham is called the father of the faithful because of his character qualities. He was obedient. He left his home, the things that were familiar, his friends at the call of God and for the call of God. He was unselfish. He gave Lot the first choice of the land, which goes to show that when God has promised his all to us, we don't have to be selfish, for God has enough for everyone. So there is no need to be selfish with what God has given us. He had great courage when he defeated the robber kings in Genesis chapter 14. He was also giving he gave tithes to Melchizedek, the priest. It says he was incorruptible. He refused to receive gifts for service rendered in Genesis chapter 14. He was also mighty in prayer in Genesis 18 where he pleads for the city of Sodom. He was wonderful in faith. He was willing to offer up his only son, Isaac, which is a wonderful picture of what God did for us in Jesus. These, beloved, are the character qualities we need today in a life of faith. Obedience, unselfishness, courage, a benevolent spirit, mighty in prayer, and wonderful in faith. When God calls us, He also equips us. Believe Him today, and you will have faith to live by. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments, 
or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636. For 60 years, Crowder College has been empowering students to soar to new heights. From agriculture to education, to business, sports, and the newest technologies, Crowder always has something interesting going on. I'm Adam Winkler of KNEO Radio. Join me each week as I talk to a different person from Crowder College about what's been happening and what's coming up next. It's the Insider's Guide to All Things Crowder. Subscribe today to the This Week in Crowder College podcast, available from the Sky High Podcast Network.